In this video, we're going to talk about Gunslinger Spawn being injured and outlawed, and he is also on the run. Alrighty then, this is a comic book review of Gunslinger Spawn, issue number 30, brought to you by Rated Comics. Let's get to it. Previously in Gunslinger Spawn, Linda takes Javi on a cross-country journey while he attempts to recoup from his injuries. Now forgive me because I'm just getting over a cold and starting to get my voice back, but you know when it comes to Spawn and some of this content, yo boy got to drop it off because one, we hungry like that, and two, you know this brother on Rated Com is going to start feeding y'all, so let's get into it, man. So Linda and Javi been on the road a few hours, and with Javier drifting off to sleep, it's given Linda time to reflect. Like, why is she even with this car with this stranger? Of course she needs the money he offered, but was it a smart move for her to take it? Is she even safe with him? So she gets at this stop sign and she wonders which way to go and she asks Javi that while she's still thinking about all that, like why am she even doing all this, you know? So Javier is like, it doesn't matter, you pick. Well, since I don't know where we're going, it's tough to pick, bruh. Then she sees it, the thing he's been trying to hide, his wound. She's obviously startled, so she wants to go in and take a closer look. And she gets out the car like, you know, this is out of control. I didn't sign up for this stuff. This is some bull drive, man. So she paces talking to herself in front of the car for two minutes before getting back in. After she calms down and she tells Javier, we need to get you to a hospital. You're bleeding everywhere. Javier's like, nah, we ain't going to no damn hospital. Forget that. So Javier tells her, please, I'm begging you. Let's just keep it moving, all right? So she's like, I don't know if we should do that. You know, her better judgment's kicking in. Looks like you're dying. And Javier gets out the car to prove a point that it's just a scratch. He got it from a fight with the other day, you know, from the previous issue. So he gets up and he tells her, I've had far worse before this. I promise you. Besides, look at me. Nothing can hurt this. He starts flexing. And she's like, bro, that ain't funny, all right? So against her better judgment, she finally agrees and goes back in the car. She tells him, fine, but I don't like any of this, all right? You hear me? Not one bit. And just letting you know, if I'm getting back in this car, I'm not going to do anything illegal for you, all right? I'm not doing none of that. And I sure as hell don't want no dead body in my car, so don't be dying on me now. And Javier's like, girl, I'm not going to die on you. Come on now, which you'll find it. No, he didn't say that. But that just sounds funny, though. So she's like, okay, well, at least let me get you cleaned up. We're going to go into town and... If you die on me, I'm still gonna get paid, right? And Javier's like, I like you, girl. You got some spunk too. Oh, shut up. I just don't bleed on my car seats, all right? So they exchange funny dialogue while they're going into town. What town are they going into? Well, we're gonna find out later on. As Linda lectures Javier and peppers him with questions, which he answers in half truths, the inevitable eventually happens. Javier needs to pee. So he gets out, breaks the seal, if you will. You guys remember those from your college days, right? Or maybe from your older 20s. You know what I'm talking about breaking the seal. We've all been there. That's unless you don't drink. So Javier asks her, any idea when we might be getting closer to Gettysburg? Obviously there's a sign right there saying when they're going to get to Gettysburg. So Javier gets back in the car and Linda asks him a personal question. Can you read? And Javier has that guilt on his face. So she tells him, you don't have to be embarrassed. I'm not educated much myself. And Javier is like, well, it's why I asked you for help. Oh, no problem. Well, we can talk about this later, but let's take care of your little injury first. So they get to Gettysburg and she goes into the pharmacy. Now, obviously she tells Javier to stay put, but Javier's curiosity though gets the better of him. So he takes a walk and he sees diamonds in the window, not knowing that it's just displayed diamonds, but you know what? He just think it's the darnest thing. Now these local town folks notice Javier is not from around here, boy, and Javier's like, yeah, I know, but how, what gives you the impression? Yo, woke ass bumper gave us the impression. So Javier's like, I don't understand what that means because keep in mind, the brother can't read. So the townspeople tell him it means we like things quiet around here, boy. All right. So one of the guys notices Javier's little pet that he got from Dakota in previous issues. The dinosaur that could turn into a horse. So Javier gets pissed, tells him that's mine. And they're like, nah, bruh, back up. That's payment for coming into this town with that bull jive. So they leave and they're like, come on, boys, let's go show off what we found. So Linda gets out the pharmacy, but she's wondering where Gunslinger spawned, or in that case, Javier went. So 42 minutes later, these guys exit Steve's bar. They're drunk. They're laughing at Holly, reminiscing stupid jokes about the one-eyed nun and this and that. But Gunslinger spawns like, nah, bruh, turn around. What do you want? And Gunslinger responds like, that's easy. I want my pet. And he looks like he's about to stand on business right now. And these brothers are like, come on now. You know we already ate. We already drank. We ain't got time for all this. So you just bought yourself some trouble. But Gunslinger Spawn's movement is so fast that they barely see it. And Gunslinger Spawn doesn't care. He just gets his needed effect, cutting the three of them down to two. Now he's hoping they now get smart because he wants that smoke, but they don't. So as they pick up the gun, Gunslinger Spawn shoots the gun out the way. Javi knows what he wants to do, but he tampers himself. 
And he, yeah, he better tap himself. He's about to go John Wick gunstick spawn status. And by the way, I did watch some John Wick the past few days, but I had no voice. That was really fun, man. It's kind of good to be sick and just catch up on old action movies. But anyways, so in a flash, he cuts the two of them down to one. So this guy's like, all right, bro, you want your pet? I got him right here, but drop your gun before I break its freaking neck. And they have a stare down. And this guy's like, yo, if you were going to shoot me, you'd have done it by now. But Gunsticker Spawn holsters his gun. He knows he won't need it to win as the pet, the lizard, the dinosaur starts getting ready to morph into something you already know what it's going to be. And that something is a mystic fire burning the man's flesh. And the flames arise, transforming the tiny creature into one we've only read about in Greek mythology where your ass gets burned. The man stands stunned at what he's witnessed to until the horse kicks him with all his might. And that kind of kick, you know that's got to do some damage. So the first guy, Gunstick Spawn, goes up to him while he's hanging upside down. And he tells him, yes, everything you just saw was real. Your eyes weren't playing tricks on you. But here's what I'm guessing. If you're a smart man and right now that's doubtful, you won't tell anyone about this, will you? You know why? If you do, they'll lock you up. They'll see you some kind of crazy man talking about a tiny lizard turning into a horse made of fire. Bet that won't go over very well would it so i can wait till help comes or we can both go our own separate ways your choice no 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 brother's like no we good yeah thought so says gunslinger spawn so he takes care of business and he goes back to the car where linda's waiting at. and yo girl is in the car and she lets it be known to javier that i was in the car alone you walked off there's a car full of cash you left the door unlocked someone could have took it and i could have took the car and the cash my damn self and left you here and gunstick responds like yeah but you did it because you're good with melinda that's a special gift oh yeah well next time i might not just be so damn special that money's looking tempting anyway and i'm hungry like that got some stuff for your wound we need to stop and fix you up i can't take this anymore so Javier's pet that Dakota gave him gets up and she freaks the hell out. Javier tries to cobble her down like, Linda, it's okay, we're okay, relax, it's my pet. I should have told you about him, but before he can finish the sentence, he tells her to stop. She comes to a screeching halt and he can't believe what he sees. They're still here. The logo atop the building is the mark used by those who conspired in wiping out his family. 150 years ago, wasn't a logo. It was their symbol. One, they brand onto their victims' burning flesh. Now, Gunsinker Spawn has some business in this town, and he's looking for that smoke. And I believe I do recall seeing that logo in a previous issue of Gunsinker Spawn. I just cannot recall. But anyways, that is the end of Gunsinker Spawn, issue number 30. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. Also, link in description if you wish to purchase this comic book and or any of our other limited print rated comics exclusives to add to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. Lastly, usually I say this video is sponsored by coffee, but because of my voice and you guys put up with it, this video is sponsored by tea. So if you'd like to buy a boy a cup of tea, or when I do feel better, it's going to go back to coffee, link in description, or donate to the super thanks. But the greatest compliment you guys can do is by liking this video and subscribing to Rated Comics YouTube channel. Thank you again for watching. Until next time.